Yo, what's up, guys? Uh, today, um, we're just gonna talk about why Section 230 is killing YouTube and uh, making it unviable as a uh, independent content creation platform. Um, again, if you like these videos on YouTube, uh, this is just more casual, laid back content. However, I'm looking at making different uh, videos regarding journalism and things like that. But if you like this kind of content and uh, feel like feel like um feel like you want to look into my investigative stuff, uh, you can do that. Um, but today's video is about why Section 230 is killing YouTube. Uh, so as for those who are unaware, Section 230 is the law that gives com uh, social media companies pretty much full-blown immunities from content. So an example would be um, someone posts beheading videos, the social media company isn't liable for that. It's a liable on the individual. Um, and that kind of stuff. Or it's like if things are posted illegally. Um, like illegal content like pedophilia, or child porn, things like that. Um, that it just makes the social media companies not liable for that kind of content and it puts a liability on the individual basically posting it. Um, how is that bad, you may ask? Well, the thing is, a lot of people don't refuse to tackle is Section 230 includes federal harassment laws, right? So federal harassment laws in regards to at least U.S. based companies, so I'd assume Google, which owns YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, right, they all fall under Section 230 in the U.S., which allows these companies to basically um, terminate channels and are not liable for federal harassment laws. Well, the problem with federal harassment laws in the U.S. is it's basically any sort of unwanted conduct. So, Someone can make a video saying why I disagree with Barack Obama, for example, or to something like that. YouTube can take it down if, at the request of this abroad, if it's unwanted conduct. That's kind of what it is. It, it, it doesn't have to be violent, it doesn't have to be like obscene. It could just be reasons why a person disagrees with them, but it falls under Section 230 for getting terminated. Is that kind of an ordeal where, in reality, you don't... You could just make a video cr uh, critiquing someone in a positive way. You know, offering solutions for how to make things better. And they can get your tan channel struck and terminated. Um, and it really doesn't matter. Like, they can be picky-choosy on that. And you don't really have a say-so in that ordeal. Um, that's kind of a problem because they're protected against just removing people willy-nilly at the request of an individual and you don't really like you can't control what someone else does and that's kind of what it comes down to I guess and that's kind of why I think section 230 should be optimized to some capacity um, to allow Things such as like disagreements to happen because under Section 230, if someone disagrees with you and it's and they don't they don't want I guess criticism, they could just have you removed or or demonetized, which I don't think is a good idea to have since it's a bad precedent going forward. Um, again, Section 230 as a liability thing, it's not bad. I think social media companies should have liabilities removed on things that they don't post or operate I think that's a good um, I think that's a good way of protecting companies while allowing the platform uh, to have again uh, freedom and people can grow channels um, it's just you, you don't really have that with section 230 you have live it's kind of like getting your cake and eating it too. They can just flat out remove you without 
any consequence. I mean, so without breaking any sort of laws, things like that, again, I don't think social media companies should be liable for what someone does. That's not what I'm suggesting at all. But because of the way it's been weaponized, it's not a good look. Um, and so therefore, I think there should be changes to allow, excuse me, to allow YouTube and content cre content creators on the site to be able to make them liable if Google um, bans their channel after an appeal or something like that. Um, because it, they have no liabilities at all, and I think that's kind of dangerous. It, it, in the sense of, it can limit things a lot. That would be like if so, if someone disagrees with me, I can shut them up online because it's unwanted conduct that they talked about me in any sort of light, like positive or negative. Um, YouTube can still take it down, but you know. You may not be breaking the law, but YouTube can take it down because because they feel like it's hateful, con or unwanted conduct, whether it's hateful or not. Um, again, that's just me. I think an open internet is a better internet, and if someone has a dumb idea, let them let them shit post and get get all the hate they want. I mean, that's that's a that's just my take on things. Uh, but yeah, if y'all like the videos, uh, these kinds of videos on YouTube, subscribe to my, uh, hit the rumble button on my, on my rumble account, um, cause I get into a, a lot more in-depth, um, investigations in regards to corruption there, and, um, how to levy against the media, and what to, how to, uh, basically, um, how to read the lines on this stuff because I cover all sorts of different topics again none of it's personal um, and if, if it's a topic that again is personal to you that's fine um, again I'm just speaking as a general term on this stuff but yeah again if you like this video uh, like here join, follow me on rumble at CMO rumble 102 I'm looking at making journalistic based content there in the future because Again, I just don't trust Section 230. Um, yeah. Alright. Uh, see you later. Bye.